thanks again for coming on the podcast to give people a brief overview of what the podcast is. This is the future podcast and we basically get on uh, professionals, people who are in our uh, network and we get them to tell them a little bit about themselves um, a little bit about who they are, uh, you know, where they came from and what they do at the moment and what their, I suppose, what their, their future has in store in relation to business, um, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Lovely. So if you don't mind telling uh, our listeners a little bit about yourself, thank you so much. Wonderful. So um, I'm actually born in Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland, and moved to Canada when I was a child. I grew up in Montreal on the west coast, east coast of Canada, and I moved to uh, Vancouver back in uh, 1995. And back then, uh, I was a teacher, and I moved to Vancouver, and I was still an educator and a high school teacher, all the way until December 21st of 2018. That is the day I decided to retire and go full-time into entrepreneurship. But I had been doing both, uh, being an educator and an employee full-time while finishing that job at the end of the day at three o'clock and my entrepreneurship career would take off from three o'clock till probably 11 o'clock midnight every day, seven days a week. So I would consider that at that time I was in an apprentice training for about three years until I decided to jump in um, full time into a, into entrepreneurship. Okay, and that obviously was a like that's a totally different field, totally different mindset. You're oh. talking about getting up, you know, going to work on a on a schedule that is set by an employer as opposed to, you know, being responsible to yourself. Absolutely, and all my life I played it safe. Um, And that was a blind spot of mine. I never realized that um, patterns of childhood I believed and and I had a belief system that I was not smart enough to be my own and to go into entrepreneurship. And that was a false belief. And I always knew that, you know, I played it safe. I was in the education field. I was happy. But by the age of 40, about 15 years ago, I started to feel uninspired and bored at work. And one day um, at the age of 40, which is 15 years ago, I looked up in the sky and I said, you know, it was a July beautiful day. Everybody's at work. I'm a teacher. I don't have a job during the summertime. And I was bored out of my mind going, it's got to be more to this than life. This, This just can't be it. Because I felt that I had really reached my maximum performance as a teacher. And uh, I delved into the idea of becoming administrator, but it never, it was never my calling. Um, I just didn't think it was going to bring me more inspiration. So I never ended up going that route, even though I was um, given the job, I never ended up taking it. And I knew that I, I didn't know what I, what I was going to do, but I knew I needed a change. So that minute, that minute I asked and I looked up to the sky and I looked at the universe and I said, universe, something's got to happen. I need something right away. Something changed. It was unbelievable. And so that day I met somebody, um, coincidentally who was teaching and in, in the entrepreneurship world and he was teaching people about how money works. Well, that piqued my interest. And right from that day on, my life started to change. And did you, did you want to be a teacher when you were, you know, when you were growing up, when you were, you know, in school and, and did you ever have any ambitions of being an entrepreneur? I always had ambitions of being an entrepreneur, but again, I had a belief system that told me I wasn't smart enough, not good enough, and that, that I should play it safe and why complicate your life, just go and have a secure job with the government. So I believe that that was taught to me. I believed it. I should have never thought of it. But, you know, I was a little girl looking up to the people teaching me this and I thought they yeah. knew they knew better than me. Where did you get that belief system? Was it the people that, that you you know, family, friends? Yes, especially family. Yeah, family. And I think that was their overprotective way of protecting me. I don't think they meant any harm. And I was too naive and too uh, innocent at the time to to push through that. I wish I would have been more um, stubborn and said, no, I'm going to show you guys. But instead, I decided to believe it. But, you know, better late than never. Yeah. So I started to, you know, explode out of that belief system at the age of 40. And um, and I've never looked I've never looked back since then. Never looked back. And it's the best thing I ever did was to 
make a slow transition into it. I don't believe it's smart to just jump two feet in until you kind of get your feet wet. You kind of understand what it's all about. You, you form your community, you form your tribe, you know, you get comfortable and then at the right moment. So it's important to make calculated risks and to jump when it's the right uh, the right time, not to just make a blind risk and just jump in there and not really have a contingency plan. That's, that's not a smart way to go. No, yeah, absolutely. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot before you get started. Yeah. And so what I first started to do, I realized is that I needed to work on my mindset. That was the biggest challenge I had before I decided to jump in. So I had to learn how to get out of my way. And I didn't know that I was in my way. So the only thing I did was, okay, I need help. I need to be around people who have a generous mindset, uh, uh, an abundant mindset, and people who are supportive and generous in the way that they are around me. So I found uh, a couple of companies that, that, were, that trained me in mindset because that's what I needed to do first because I believe, I strongly believe that your biggest impediment is your own mind. Yeah. So I worked on myself very, very, very hard for the first four years from the age of 40 to 45. It was just that, you know, pushing through my uncomfortableness of actually looking at how am I holding myself back? What does that look like? Because it was such a new world to me. It was so incredibly confronting to me. I had a hard time, but I knew that I, I wanted to get to the other end. So as much as I was confronted, I had the support team behind me that believed in me and who would very softly nudge me, nudge me forward. And so I decided to believe in them because I looked up to them and I said, maybe they know something that I don't know and they have my best interest. So the best thing I can do is just believe and just move forward and let the universe play its part. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. You mentioned, um, you know, spending time with, uh, people who have an abundant mindset as, as opposed to, you know, self-sabotage, which is what kind of a lot of people find themselves doing. They, something goes wrong and then straight away they they put up the walls or or reverse so how how did you shift that mindset to the abundance mindset from somebody who is maybe for for a long time was working on salary and and the money comes in steadily and salary sometimes can be like a chain you know it's hard to it's hard to let it go it it, it keeps you held absolutely and i didn't even understand the difference between a scarcity mindset and an abundant mindset to begin with yeah. So first I had to understand the difference and the majority of the people live in a scarcity mindset. All they do is talk about news, traffic, sports, and weather, and they complain about everything and they never have the mentality of how do you get to the next, the next, the, the next step, the next phase. How do you get out of this? What do you do? They just go around in a circle and a circle and circle and always talk about the same thing. And, and you know, the only definition of crazy is keep doing the same thing and expect something to change. Right. And so I realized that my whole life, I was in the wrong tribe of people, tribe of people that had a scarcity mindset. So what happened is they would always pull me down. Right. So I had to change the people I was hanging out with. Did so that was the biggest thing that helped me move from scarcity to abundant mindset. So I moved to a tribe of people that were generous, a tribe of people that had an abundant mindset an encouraging mindset, a supportive mindset, a generous mindset, and a, um, you know, we're going to do this no matter what. So that was such a breath of fresh air. I was like, yes, I finally found where I belonged. There was nothing any, there was nothing wrong with me in the past. There was nothing wrong with them. I just had to change my friends. So yeah. you really, really have to take a hard look of who are you hanging out with, what's going on in your life and you have to be in action for your own life you got to pull life towards you and not expect life to change without you making the effort that's needed did you find that when you found your new tribe did did the did, did the previous tribe just kind of fall off bit by bit or was there a bitterness there or did they try and pull you back it depends. There's two types of tribes. I call them your, your friends or your coworkers and then your family. So um, my, my friends were 
skeptical, but they would kind of like stay in the background and not say too much. A couple of them were supportive. Most of them would rather say nothing. My family um, thought I was crazy because, you know, leaving a perfectly secure job with a pension with the government, are you crazy? It's a professional job. You're, you're an educator. Why would you leave? And then my, my, tra my friends or my uh, co-workers, I never related to to begin with. So I said a really nice goodbye and never spoke to them again. And they thought I was crazy. The last Last day when I retired in the, in, in, in the staff room and I told everybody I was going to start my own foundation, you can hear crickets in the room because of their scarcity mentality. They didn't need to say anything, but the whole vibe was, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Good luck. Right. And it was like, bye. And I didn't have to prove anything to them. I just knew that I was going to make a difference. I didn't know exactly what that was going to look like. But what's more important is that your drive drives you. And you don't have to figure it all out. Know what your end is in sight and do whatever it takes to get there believe in yourself. And then all of a sudden, that's what happened to me. The universe started to bring the right people to me to be able to create what I've created today. And it's almost like magic. It's, I can't explain it, but you have to have such a strong belief and a drive that the universe listens to you and the universe brings the right people in, in front of you. And that's what happened. Slowly but surely, the right people came to play who helped me create my website, my foundation rather, who then helped me create the white paper. I didn't even know what a white paper was at the beginning. And it's what that means is what do you, you know, the, the foundation of the foundation, what is that all about? And there's a lot of learning, but you have to believe, you have to be in action, you have to ask for help, and you have to have the courage to move forward in the face of fear. That's the biggest thing, but also not know all the answers. Cause if you're going to wait to have all the answers, you're going to get stuck and you're not going to move forward. And then you're going to be in analysis paralysis. So for me, the more uncomfortable I am, the more I run towards it. Because I say, I would rather move the, the, the clock one minute forward every day than to stay stuck at 12 o'clock every day. Yeah. And be okay with moving it just a minute every day. And that after a while, all those little accomplishments start to create momentum. And the next thing you know, you've, you've accomplished way more than you thought you can. And it's an incredible feeling, an incredible feeling. The thing is, you have to get over your fear. You must push ahead and figure out as you're going along, not wait for everything to be perfect. Because if you're going to do that, you're going to wait all your life. And we have a very short life, and this is not a dress rehearsal. So I only started with this abundant mindset in my 40s. Imagine if I would have started this in my 20s. Yeah. Oh, where would I be today? So I'm all about empowering younger people um, and giving them what I've learned at a younger age so that they can surpass me a lot faster because I love helping other people. I don't want other people to get to the place of stagnation that I got and waste 20 years of their life, 30 years of their life before they finally decided to have a breakthrough and finally have the courage to push through their fear. I want people to do it as soon as they hear about it or realize it and have the courage to do so because it's such a beautiful life. Once you pass through your fear, the happiness on the other side is just indescribable, just indescribable. So that's what I want for people more than anything else. So um, you mentioned something, uh, a little problem with my camera, but that's okay. You mentioned something um, about, about your tribe and a kind of how about your tribe almost like the universe gave it to you just you're probably putting yourself though in the correct positions putting yourself in different social circles because of your abundance mindset and then the universe kind of re rewarded you yeah so because i had to work on my mind first i knew that i went and got started to get trained and developed with a company that i believed in and then that was the beginning of a new community because everyone around me helping me with my mindset training, my training and development, were in the same mindset as me, wanting the best for me. And that's how things started to change, which made me meet one person, which made me meet the next person and the next person and the next person. 
So it's all been in increments of movements mm. and they start small and they yet, but as long as you keep believing th those increments of, um, can, can continue to be small and then they become maybe bigger and then even bigger, then they go back to being small. But the point of the matter is it's always a forward movement. It's always yeah. fluid towards moving forward. And yeah. you shouldn't judge how big the forward movement is. As long as it's forward movement, that's a positive. But don't put, um, don't, don't set yourself up for, for disaster by saying, I haven't grown enough. I haven't achieved enough. Because if you do that, you're going to stop your momentum. Yeah. Be grateful for anything that moves you forward. Anything. I think Jordan Peterson says, um, don't compare yourself to who somebody else is today. Compare yourself to who you are yesterday. Yes, absolutely. That, that is, you know, and just admire and look up to the people that you admire and, 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 and let them guide you as mentors. But you need to realize everybody started at the same place. One of the biggest breakthroughs I got by being around entrepreneurs, um, especially social entrepreneurs and people who want to make a difference with generous mindset is that they also have no clue what they're doing. When I heard that, I went, Hallelujah. And these are people that have ex that are extremely successful, one, two million, three million, twenty million a year in profit, but they still come up and say, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm working it and I'm building the plane as I'm flying it. All I do is continue moving forward every day. And that was such a relief because it's like, okay, great, then I'm not crazy. We are all in the same boat together. The only difference is the ones that get stuck in analysis paralysis and who don't want change and the ones who move forward regardless of their fear. So that's what the most important thing is. Surround yourself with people of like-minded uh, like um, mentality, abundance mentality. Because if your five friends are broke, you're probably going to be broke too. And what I also learned, which was so important, which I love, if I am the dumbest person in the room, that is the best thing. And coming from an educating, educator standpoint, I used to feel that that was the worst thing. Like I shouldn't be, I need to be smart. Oh my God. But it's really positive because if I'm the dumbest in the room, be okay with it because guess what? There is so much room for improvement. Yes. So you end up leveraging all the smarts in the room and they end up helping you. And then you realize that everybody has something to bring to a team. Just because your skill set is not the same skill set as someone else doesn't mean that you don't have something to bring to the team. And what's really important is that everybody works in their genius. And if everybody works in their genius on a team, then you get a powerful team where everybody supports each other. So get to know what your genius is, acknowledge yourself for that, work in that area and find teams and tribes of people who help fill the void of where is where your genius is not so for example i created a team recently to help me with social media with my foundation link.org and i had no idea how to do social media no idea so what i did is i created a team who came to me who wanted to help and they ended up educating me over a three-month period of how to deal with social media. And I'm still learning today as we speak. And it was absolute chaos for me at the beginning, but I let them contribute to my life. And then I contributed to their life. It becomes an uh, equal value proposition. It's really important that everybody brings value to everybody. And the three things I look for are results, and that doesn't necessarily mean money. That can mean ambition, that can mean drive, that can mean potential. So results, integrity, and heart-centeredness. If you don't have those three things, you're not allowed being part of my tribe, or I will not join the tribe. Because I've seen tribes that are just results and no integrity and no heart-centeredness, and that just repels me. That's the world I used to live in. And so when you have all those three values and everybody believes in those values, imagine what you can accomplish together. It's just mind-boggling. So... If you were giving somebody, you know, maybe yourself when you were 20, 21, whatever, somebody a little bit of advice now, taking today's world in account, you know, if you knew what you knew now, 
what would you tell a 21 year old version of you? Go and get trained and developed. Go and devour as many books of your mentors that you admire. Go on YouTube and watch all their videos and you know, become obsessed with training and development of yours. Success leaves clues. Go and listen to the people who are successful already and just do the same. That's what I love about the entrepreneurship world. Everybody shares their information and there's nothing wrong with copying each other. Why reinvent the wheel? So that's number one. And number two, you have to go and get yourself trained and developed with companies that you respect that work just in that mindset. There's many different, I'm not going to plug anyone today, but there's many different companies that exist out there. Many different people who have training that, that, that work on your mindset. You have, that is your biggest, biggest thing that you have to pay attention to first, because you can learn so much from other people when it comes to business, but your mind is going to hold you back first and foremost before anything else. So you have to slay that dragon, which is your mind first. That's number one, because the number one reason for failure is your, your own inner critic and your own self-sabotaging ways. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, you said there something that was very, very poignant um, that I love. Success leaves clues. Can you give a, a little bit more on that? Well, don't just believe the hype of what people say, because a lot of people do a lot more talking with their lips than they do their feet. So you need to trust and verify, because there's a lot of people who on the internet who promote X, Y, Z, and they haven't even achieved it themselves. So there's people on the internet that go to teach people about how money works and they don't even have their own money right. Yeah. So that is rampant. So you have to make sure that who you decide to follow and who you're going to, who, who you're going to choose as your mentor is somebody that not only speaks it, but walks the walk. And you are allowed to ask the questions and dig deep for proof of actual success. So if someone's going to teach me about money, they need to prove to me in a way that makes me feel comfortable that they show proof that they are successful and they do have their money right. Why am I going to go listen to someone who's teaching me about money who doesn't have the money right themselves? And that is rampant out there. So a lot of people I know have decided to spend thousands of dollars on mentors and they never even knew whether that mentor actually had success in what they were teaching to begin with. And most of the time it's not the case. So you have to do your due diligence. And if that mentor, it doesn't want to take the time to show you the proof of their results and their success, then that's a major red flag. Walk away. Brilliant. Um, you mentioned, you know, books, uh, read books, like learn from your, um, mm -hmm. learn from your heroes essentially and the people that you want to emulate. What yep. books would you recommend for our listeners? Well, first and foremost, um, the number one book I recommend is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Absolutely, you need to devour anything from this man. That changed my mindset because it teaches about the four quadrants. There's four quadrants, employee, self-employed, business, and investor. And I used to live in the employee quadrant, extremely limiting. So when you go to read about this and learn the difference between a rich dad and a poor dad, you will learn that rich people don't work for money. What? Rich people work for income producing assets. That sounds like Chinese to most people who don't understand what that is. So what you need to do is read that book and there will be clarity. The other book I strongly suggest to read is the book called Traction and Rocket Fuel by Gino Wickman. So these two books are extremely important because they talk about the role of an integrator and the role of a visionary because there's two types of entrepreneurs mainly visionary and integrator. So visionary is the person that has the big picture and is not good at details. They just don't like to work in the details. And the integrator is the person who understands the visionary and helps them integrate all the systems necessary to be able to get to that vision. I'm lucky that I'm a bit of both. 
And the reason I'm a bit of both is because I was an educator for 35 years. I had to cater to the visionary side of what's going on in the classroom and what I need to do. Plus I had to organize the, the students all at the same time. So I've got a personality in both quadrants. I'm visionary as much as I am integrator, but most people are both. But which one do I enjoy more? I enjoy the integrator side more. Let the visionary do all the crazy, you know, planning and let me just support that visionary because I enjoy organizing. I enjoy empowering teams. I enjoy creating teams. I enjoy guiding and all that stuff, making sure everything is fun, seamless and getting to results. I'd rather the visionary think about um, what we're going to do. So for example, um, my visionary says we, we decided together that we're going to be giving away a hundred million dollars for philanthropic causes. That's a vision. All right, then we go backwards from there. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, first we have to create a foundation. So that's what we've been doing. We've, we've created a foundation in the last year. And now I have teams. And now I have two causes that I'm supporting. And so with time, we will get there. Now, you can tell anybody, you're gonna give a $100 million away. Most people think you'd be crazy, but that's not crazy to Bill Gates or Warren Buffett. So if Warren Buffett and Bill Gates can do it, why can't I? They started, we restarted. So all you have to do is just put one step forward. So here I am today, incredibly forward compared to last year. Where am I gonna be next year? So it's so exciting. So right. that's really, really important to, to sit down with good books that can teach you the difference. Because when you work in teams, it's extremely important to understand the chemistry and what works and what doesn't work and why you're having problems with that. Brilliant. Tatiana, we're out of time. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You so uh, much. Just, just a question for you. Where can, uh, if people want to, you know, find you online or follow you online, where can they get you? I would love them to come and support my foundation, which is www, the letter L, the letter Y, the number two, and then nk.org. So link.org, ly2nk.org. And my email is Tatiana at link.org. I'd love to hear from you and have your support on social media. And if you'd like to reach out, um, I'd, more than, I'd, I'd be more than happy to help in any way I can. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And um, hopefully we can get you on again and you can tell us a little bit about uh, Link. The, the Link. Leaders forward. yielding to new knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you. All Cheers. right. Bye-bye. Thank you.